I've always been interested in animals. It was almost by accident that I began working on fossil mammals, and then ultimately I got interested in working on living mammals as well in order to understand the fossils better. I'm interested in the evolutionary patterns in mammals, and so in order to understand current diversity, we need to understand the evolutionary history of the group as well. My PhD work was on a group of extinct mammals, and when I started thinking about what I wanted to do next, um, I was just fascinated by bats. As far as mammals go, they're incredibly diverse. So one in every five living mammal species is a bat. Although I work on the anatomy and the morphology of bats, it needs to be in context. And it needs to be in context of um, how they're related to one another and how we can use information from a variety of different sources to sort out those kinds of problems. And today, um, a great deal of the, the data that we use is based on gene sequences. When we go out in the field to catch these animals, we tend to do it in a variety of different ways. We use fine nets that we put up in the forest that the bats don't see with their, their echolocation and fly in and get tangled up. We do collect some animals that we bring back as scientific specimens, but today we're also collecting a lot of tissue samples using wing punches for bats and then release the animal. And that, that sample come back to the museum and be part of the archive we can use for getting genetic data in the future for that species in that geographic locality. When I started working on bats in the field, I'd never really done it before. So I went into the field with a group here from the American Museum um, in French Guiana. One night I felt, well, I can really do this all by myself. I had six nets up in this forest, a couple kilometers from our camp, and so it's the middle of the night and it's dark and we wear headlamps so that we can see what we're doing and a fruit-eating bat flew into one of the nets. These are pretty good-sized bats, so the wingspan is maybe about a foot across or so. So it's all tangled up, and I go to start taking it out, and it starts screaming. It's going, eek, 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 which is what they do when they're upset, because obviously it's frightened. So I'm taking this bat out, and then I hear another bat coming in. And basically, when they start to call, a distress call, it brings the rest of their group in to see what's going on. So another bat hits the net, and then it starts squeaking. And then more and more bats, and, and and I had basically an entire social group. I had like, I don't know, by the time I was done, maybe 20 of these things. And every second that goes by, they get more tangled up and more tangled up, and it gets harder to get them out. So I, I had a very rough evening of, you know, about 45 minutes of total panic. I finally got them all out one at a time and closed each net so I wouldn't catch any more, and I did it. So after that, everything seemed easy. <laughs> I think the larger questions are the really interesting questions. I've worked on the evolution of echolocation. Did echolocation evolve before or after flight? Um, questions like that really excite me. You know, what are the big patterns? What's the big picture? What can we learn from it?